you look at the evolutionary uh, span, we know that the average size of the human brain expanded from about 500 cubic centimeters to about 1,500 cubic centimeters over a span of about 2 million years. And, you know, modern hominids, homo sapiens, have a, a cranial capacity of about 1500 centimeters and the earliest hominids that are worthy of the name and at least that are given the name is homo habilis and she was about 500 cubic centimeters so about one third the brain size but nonetheless intelligent walking on two of uh, you know on two legs probably had tools, maybe arrows, maybe spears, maybe just rocks. But there was a tremendous expand, expansion of the size of the human brain. Now, the, uh, the stone ape theory is not simplistically saying that, well, these people ate mushrooms and got smart. You know, it, it's obviously not that simple. Numerous variables, numerous factors influence this rapid expansion but the time frame in evolutionary terms is is quick. It's the blink of an eye, really, that two million years is nothing in evolutionary time. So it was a very rapid expansion of the complexity of the size of the of our neural equipment, and that was in response to uh, you know multiple environmental factors. There were obviously they were growing up. They were evolving in an area where there were many pressures, you know, uh, and, and, but mushrooms may have been part of this mix. Why was that important? I think, I think the gist of Terence's argument, and certainly it's the gist of my argument as I uh, sort of reformulate it, uh, is that they gave us imagination essentially. They enabled us to learn. They were learning tools that enabled us to develop internally meaningful uh, abstractions, basically, symbols. And we, you know, as, as modern humans, we live in an environment, we live in an ocean of ideas, you know, internal uh, visualizations, thoughts, and, and, uh, and, and constructs are every bit is real in some ways more real to us than the external world. And I think consciousness, you can define consciousness in various ways. Nobody really knows, you know, there are many different uh, definitions, but one of the definitions, one of the uh, sort of qualities of consciousness that I favor in the context of this quote unquote stoned ape theory is that, we build an internal representation of reality. We build a model of reality in our heads that is a reflection of our environment, but it's not, it, it's not the same as our environment. It's essentially a internal construct of the way things are. And uh, it, that includes sensory input, sensory neural input from the environment, but then there are filters. It goes through filters. A lot of what the brain does is it excludes information. It selectively lets certain things through and it excludes other things in the environment that may not be important for our immediate survival. So the brain selectively blocks those things so we can focus on what's important, like, you know, the saber toothed tiger that's about to eat you. You know, you want your attention on that and not what the, you know, what the leaf cutter ants in the background are up to, because that's, you know, you can look at that later. So uh, the brain, uh, the, the mushrooms helped us to uh, create this internal representation of reality, which I call the reality hallucination. 
and in and that's the reality that we inhabit you know it's it's a model it's not reality itself we assume that it corresponds to reality but it's a it's like a schematic of it it's like an abstract of it in neuroscience these days the uh you know the 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 faddish word the currently accepted term is the default mode network uh but the de- default mode network uh doesn't quite encompass what i'm talking about at the basis of this sort of cognitive uh the the mushroom stimulated cognitive activities in our you know, in our thinking, and the and the critical link is synesthesia. Synesthesia is the translation of one sensory modality into another. So you can see color, see sounds, for example, and hear colors, and, and this sort of thing. And synesthesia, if you if you think about it, is the basis of language, because we here I am sitting here making essentially meaningless small mouth noises at you. But because we share a language, those small mouth noises link to inner visualizations and interpretations. So if I say mushroom, you know, chances are you understand what I mean, and chances are you visualize a mushroom, you know, in your imagination. So I think this was the critical link that... that you know, as we know, deep, deep visionary states with psilocybin mushroom uh, mushrooms lead to a flood of internal visions and hallucinations and so on. 